Uh, welcome to uh, another outstanding program presented by USAID uh, in combination with USEA, United States Energy Association. We have an outstanding uh, set of speakers, uh, hyper specialized in this amazingly, intensely important topic. With that, uh, I'm Sheila Hollis. I'm the Acting Executive Director of the United States Energy Association. We welcome you on behalf of USEA and uh, my colleague and friend here, Jamila Amodeo, will be speaking in a moment with respect to uh, USAID's role. Uh, we have a panel of, uh, of extreme experts and we are delighted to be with you today. What is USEA? Just a moment on it. Uh, USEA convenes, educates, and provides a nonpartisan forum for the American energy stakeholders. Uh, internationally though, we support global energy development by expanding access to safe, affordable, and clean energy in partnership with the US government, USAID, uh, DOE, and the State Department. Uh, USEA is nonprofit, nonpartisan, non-lobbying organization that's nearly 100 years old, and our mission has these two pillars uh, of significance. First, uh, domestically, we are a resource uh, for the uh, American energy industry and beyond, and we convene stakeholders uh, and uh, share ideas uh, and uh, present major programs uh, to the uh, international and the domestic community. Uh, and we are delighted to be here in a support role. Uh, my friend and colleague, Jake Swanson, is helping uh, from uh, USEA Central. And uh, we look forward to hearing from our outstanding panel and uh, continuing our uh, relationship and sharing of uh, knowledge, ideas, technology to help the transition to a better, cleaner, uh, safer energy world and more secure. So with that, Jamila, uh, I hand it over to you. Thank you, Sheila. We're honored to have you today with us. Welcome to the third webinar in the series of Grid Modernization, hosted by USAID, Bureau for Development, Democracy, and Innovation, and the United States Energy Association under the Energy Utility Partnership Program. I'm Jamila Modeo. I work uh, in USAID's Energy and Infrastructure Office and support our partnership program. Uh, with uh, amazing uh, colleagues at USEA and uh, their members. Thank you. Uh, thanks to our partnership, we are able to utilize top US public and private sector expertise as a critical resource to share lessons learned and to promote advanced modernization efforts of power utilities worldwide. Today, we're excited to learn from our experts, Ricardo Abud from Cell uh, Schweizer Engineering Laboratories and Glitzen Mendes Costa from Equatorial Ener Energy Energia in Brazil on the topic of substation protection relay conversion from analog to digital technology. The term digital state substation is becoming uh, quite common. And uh, according to some estimates, the digital substation market was valued at over 7 billion in 2019 and is projected to reach almost 13 billion by 2027 growing at a close to 8% compound annual growth rate from 2020 to 2027. This is why in this webinar, our guest speakers will discuss how a traditional substation, to be, uh, substation becomes a digital substation, review the design objectives of the substation protection control and monitoring system, and how the benefits of modern mic microprocessor-based devices contributed to Equatorial Energia's success in an industry as an industry leader. This webinar builds on our digitalization and cybersecurity webinar series held in 2020 by focusing only on the digitalization component. For cybersecurity information, if you're interested, please visit the USCA platform, which contains all 15 cybersecurity webinars and two industry panels. I would like to thank everybody who joined us today for your time and commitment. We want to hear from you. I encourage you not only to post your questions to speakers, but also share with us your experiences with similar projects. A big thank you to our experts for presenting today. And to get started, I would like to invite Jake Swanson from the United States Energy Association to take the digital, digital controls of this webinar from me to continue with presentations. Thank you. Thank you, Jamila. Um, 
and uh, good afternoon, um, good evening, good morning to everyone uh, around the world. And thank you for um, attending our third webinar in our grid modernization series. Um, if this is your first time attending one of these webinars, my name is Jake Swanson. Uh, I'm a program coordinator um, at the US Energy Association's uh, Energy Utility Partnership Program um, that's based in Washington, DC. Um, please note that this webinar is recorded um, and that all participants are muted with their uh, video turned off, um, but you're welcome and definitely encouraged um, to post questions, um, stories, uh, either in the, the chat or the Q&A box below. Um, I'll be monitoring them and passing them on to our presenters as appropriate. Um, you can find recordings of um, our past and future webinars. Um, at our, our new um, link on our website at usea.org slash EUPP uh, slash webinars. Uh, today's webinar will cover the uh, design objectives of the substation protection control and monitoring system uh, and how the benefits of modern microprocessor based devices uh, contributed to Equatorial Energia's success as an industry leader. Uh, today, we have the pleasure of having Ricardo Abud, um, who is a principal engineer at Schweitzer Engineering Laboratories. Um, Ricardo has been with SEL since 2000. Um, in 2016, he transferred to SEL headquarters in uh, Pullman, Washington, um, as an international technical manager, um, providing advanced technical support and consultancy about new uh, technologies to international field offices. Um, and then in 2019, he joined uh, SEL University as a professor. Um, so we're, we're definitely happy to have him here today. Um, and also speaking, uh, we have the pleasure of having uh, Gleidson Costa, who is a system analyst at Equatorial Energia in Brazil. Um, Gleidson joined Equatorial Energia in 2016 um, and cur currently supports and develops uh, supervisory control and data acquisition, uh, SCADA applications um, and data management systems. Uh, Gleadson holds a bachelor's and master's in computer science um, and is currently pursuing an MBA uh, degree in data science and project management. Um, so thank you both for joining us today. And with that, I'll, uh, I'll pass the floor over to Ricardo. Uh, you're on mute, Ricardo. Thank you. There you go. <laughs> Thank you, Jake. Thank you for the uh, really nice introduction. Um, I'm. I will go ahead and uh, uh, share my screen, okay. and uh, we can start uh, uh, the presentation. So, thank you very much, everybody, for joining us for this webinar. It's a pleasure for me uh, to be one of the speakers uh, in this seminar. So uh, the topic, as, uh, as uh, was already uh, said, it's a very hot uh, topic, but it's also a very broad uh, topic. So we do not have time to go uh, into details for um, all of the um, uh, topics in this uh, technology, okay? So uh, in my presentation, um, I will discuss uh, some of the benefits of the digital technology. Uh, I'm going to present the some of the resources that we have available in modern digital devices. Um, uh, we are going to discuss how to reduce copper cables in the substation. And I'm talking about uh, fault locating because this is a really hot topic for transmission um, substation or transmission systems. So it's really important to have an uh, accurate fault locating when you have a sustained fault in a transmission line. So uh, just to give a very um, quick overview comparing the electromechanical and the digital uh, relay technology technologies. So we can say that uh, for a transmission um, or a, a electromechanical technology, what you have are uh, single devices or single function devices. So uh, usually one device uh, will perform a single function, for instance, an overcurrent relay is just an overcurrent relay. Uh, an uh, over voltage or under voltage is just uh, an over, over, voltage, over voltage or under voltage um, 
device, they perform just protection. They are not going to perform control. Okay? So to perform control, you need to, uh, to have additional devices. You need to have additional control switches and so on. Okay? Usually what you have, it's a, a complex wiring related to uh, electromechanical technology. So you need to perform all of that uh, parallel and series association of uh, output contacts using uh, wiring. And this uh, translating a, a very complex design and uh, a lot of uh, uh, room or a lot of space necessary to accommodate all of that relays and all of that uh, wiring. And also to keep the performance of this uh, technology or the electromechanical relays, you need to perform in an expensive maintenance. So uh, it's really hard to keep the relays uh, working properly. So you need to have a very good and very expensive uh, maintenance. So on the other hand, uh, digital relays, they are multifunction. That means a single device can perform over current, over voltage, under voltage, over frequency, and the different uh, uh, protection functions. And not only that, it's not only protection that, that they have, they also have control. So you can use the relay to uh, replace uh, control switches. You can use the relay to perform the control the, uh, for the entire bay and also for automation. So the relay will be a device that can supply data for different systems, uh, for the SCADA, for the monitoring system. And uh, uh, it's a very uh, good source to get data. Okay? And also uh, monitoring. So we can use a digital relay to monitor circuit breakers. We can use digital relays to monitor the DC system or the uh, battery system in the substation. And uh, uh, the relays, they have uh, the self-diagnostic or the self-test. So this can reduce the maintenance that is necessary because the relay, it's no longer so quiet. The relay will speak up when there is an internal problem in the relay. So it's totally different from the electromechanical that uh, uh, in the case of a failure in the electromechanical relay, you are going to find that failure during the maintenance or when it's necessary to trip and the relay does not trip, or you have an uh, incorrect operation of the electromechanical relay. In the case of the digital relay, we have the self-diagnostics. So this will alert you when there is an internal problem in the relay. And also with the digital relays, we can have automated tests. That means uh, if you have a modern uh, test device, you can perform some uh, automated tests that will make the uh, maintenance uh, much shorter in terms of uh, uh, time. Okay. Some of the uh, benefits of uh, um, system protection control, automation, monitoring with uh, uh, digital relays. And also metering, okay? So we are going to discuss about metering in the digital relays. So as we uh, uh, already uh, said, this is a multifunction device. That means we have protection, we have metering, we have control, we have automation, integration, and monitoring in a single device. Uh, we can um, develop some special protection schemes with digital relays. Uh, for instance, we can have arc flash detection. So arc flash is really important to save lives. And um, uh, we are going to discuss we, in some more details about the arc flash. We can implement a fast bus tripping. So for distribution substation, usually when you have a fault in the bus, the uh, main breaker will take 300 milliseconds, 500 milliseconds to trip in a conventional uh, time coordination uh, approach. With digital relays, we can implement a fast bus tripping that will clear the fault in 50 milliseconds. Uh, so this will increase uh, the performance or the speed of the protection system. We can implement uh, complex load shedding systems uh, using digital relays. Accurate fault location, this is really important. So with the digital relays, we can have a traveling wave fault location. So in the same device, 
you have protection, metering control, and also you have the traveling way fault location. So for transmission systems, this is really important to find or to pinpoint what is the fault when you have a sustained fault. You can have also double-ended impedance-based fault location. So you have, if you have a communication between the two relays, the two ends of the transmission line, we can implement this uh, double-ended impedance that it's very accurate also. In terms of uh, event reports, uh, oscillography, we can have with the digital relays, the high resolution event reports with a sampling rate of uh, one megahertz. So you can find or you can detect problems related with fast transients in the power system. For instance, the uh, uh, transient recovered voltage that it's a really big problem for circuit breakers or reignition for um, uh, race strikes for circuit breakers. So we can see that with a conventional um, low sampling rate, we cannot see that, uh, but now we can see that, okay? SCR, uh, sequential event reporting or sequence of uh, events. This is another important uh, feature available in the relays. Um, with the digital relays, we can do uh, some of the maintenance or also uh, changing settings uh, remotely. We can collect data remotely. We don't need to go to the substation. Totally different from the electromechanical uh, uh, relays. We can have uh, all of the relays time synced to a global uh, time, uh, time source. So this will uh, make very easier or much easier uh, to analyze uh, events or uh, for a pause analysis uh, in the power system. The relays, they have a, a control HMI. So they have dedicated push buttons to control, open, close the breaker, open, open close uh, uh, disconnectors. We, we can have some relays with a large uh, display, uh, touch screen and color. So uh, we can have the Bay Mimic screens. We have metering included in the relay. So some people can say, hey, but this relay is connected to a protection uh, class CT. But remember, the protection class CT has a good accuracy around the nominal current. The 10% error that some people uh, says that the CT, uh, protection CT has, it's for 20 times the nominal current and when we have the nominal burden connected. So when you're using the metering function in the relay, it's not 20 times the uh, nominal current, it's close to the nominal current. The uh, accuracy will be much better, like 2%, 1%. So we can use that for uh, SCADA metering. Okay? We, uh, of course, we are not going to use that for uh, revenue metering, but we can use that for uh, operation for, uh, for the SCADA. Okay? So you don't need uh, separate meters for that function. Um, and I'm, as I read, uh, I read said, so we have the self test in the relay. So that can extend the maintenance uh, uh, interval. And also uh, we can use some uh, automated uh, test devices. All of that uh, benefits will translate in very simple things that are, we are going to reduce initial and operating costs applying the digital technology. We are going to improve the continuity of service because I will be able to find problems even before they happen or when the problems um, happen, I know exactly where are the problems. I'm going to improve the reliability of the system. And of course, I'm going to reduce the uh, maintenance uh, costs. So all of that are benefits to the uh, customers and also uh, benefits for the power companies. So talking about uh, the um, pro programmable logic that we have in the digital relays. So, how of that uh, uh, logic that it's done with wiring in the electromechanical relays using association series and parallel using auxiliary relays, using auxiliary timers, 
With digital relays, we can do that with uh, a programmable logic. So we have uh, kind of uh, end gates, or gates, we have timers. And also we have math variables available. I can sum, I can subtract, I can multiply uh, different quantities that are, are available inside of the relay uh, to develop uh, new logic. So we, we can create special schemes, we can create new protection functions using the programmable logic that it's available in the relay. So we can uh, develop uh, special uh, control schemes very, very easily without increase the number of wires that you have in the panel. So basically we are going to shrink the space that is necessary to install panels in the substation. Okay. So this will reduce uh, panel uh, wiring, uh, reduces installation time and costs, can be easily tested in laboratory. So I can have a single device, a small device, I can develop all of that logic in the device and I can test in the laboratory very easily. I don't need to do all of that wiring that is necessary for the electromechanical relay. Very flexible. If so, and also if I need to modify anything, it's very easy. I don't need to change wiring. I don't need to install new uh, auxiliary relays. It's very easy. And also it's much easier uh, to uh, troubleshoot and uh, all of that information will be part, all of the uh, uh, variables that are part of this logic, it's included in the uh, SCR, that is the uh, sequ sequential event report, and also in the uh, oscillography that uh, it's generated when you have uh, any uh, event. In terms of uh, uh, control and metering, so the digital relays, they have the option for uh, uh, push buttons. So I can have dedicated uh, push bo buttons in the front side of the relay, and I can configure that push buttons to different functions, open and close the breaker, open and close disconnect switch and so on. Okay. We can also have a large color touchscreen display. And this display, we can have different custom screens. So I can have uh, uh, the Bay Mimic and I can perform control di directly in the touch screen display. I can open and close the breaker. And I have a rotating, uh, uh, rotating display. So I can have multiple uh, custom screens. So in this example here, I'm showing one metering screen where, where we are showing the uh, phasers, okay, graphically and also numbers here. Also, we have uh, uh, LEDs that can be configured. They are pro prog programmable uh, uh, LEDs. So uh, it's a kind of uh, annunciator also. Okay? So all of that can be used to uh, implement um, control and uh, uh, metering uh, systems. For the bay. Uh, in terms of output contacts, so electromechanical relays, they have a very weak output contact. Okay. In the case of the digital relays, we can have the high current interrupting contacts and high speed contacts. They can be really fast. How fast? 10 microseconds. I'm not talking about 10 milliseconds. I'm talking about 10 microseconds. It's almost instantaneous. And also they can interrupt large currents, 10 amps in a 250 volts DC. So with that, we can trip or we can act directly on the circuit breaker coils, the trip coils and closed coils uh, for the circuit breaker. So I don't need auxiliary relays for the tripping and closing. So basically I'm eliminating that auxiliary relays that are necessary for the electromechanical relays. So this will simplify the DC wiring. And also this will increase the reliability because I, I have less devices being applied. 
and this will increase the speed to clear the fault. And of course, it will reduce cost. Okay. There's, uh, uh, so this is one example with um, a trip circuit for a, a digital relay. It can be simple like that. Okay. So this is a single breaker with two trip coils. So it's common for transmission uh, breakers um, to have uh, uh, two coils. So I, in this case, it's one example with a cross tripping. Okay. So I'm using, uh, I'm tripping the coil one with the protection relay one, that is the main one, and the protection relay two, that is the main two. Um, so I'm tripping the trip coil one with that uh, uh, two output contacts directly. I don't need an auxiliary relay here. Okay. And same for the trip coil two. Uh, we can have different schemes. So this is a cross tripping scheme. Some people does not, uh, some people doesn't like that because we are uh, mixing the uh, DC voltage from the uh, coil one and coil two. Some people doesn't like to do that, but some people does. So um, it's a, just one example, okay? We don't need to, to make in this way exactly. Um, in terms of uh, uh, reducing uh, copper cable in the substations. So using fiber optics to bring the information from the sweet yard to the uh, control room, it will be much less expensive than using copper cables. Copper cables are very expensive, okay? Uh, if, I, if I have a way to use the fiber replacing the copper cables, we are going to reduce cost dramatically, okay? And also copper cables, they are going to, uh, uh, to increase or it, it requires uh, uh, larger trenches. With fiber, we can use uh, much clean trenches and much smaller uh, trenches, very um, much easier okay, to, uh, to perform the installation. We can um, run the fiber over long distances without any problem, without any interference, any uh, problem of uh, uh, electromagnetic interference, okay? It's much more resilient uh, to uh, moisture. So uh, there is a lot of advantages uh, for fibers and uh, we have some more uh, advantages uh, when using fiber, okay? So if it's an existing substation, that I'm going to modernize, I can remove all of that copper cables, okay? I don't need to replace that copper cables. So if, if you already have a, a substations with a, a full trenches, it will be much easier to use fiber than use um, additional um, copper cables. Of course, that this will minimize the CT saturation because the copper cable, it's another burden for the CT. So if you already have some problems with CT saturation using fiber, this will reduce. Uh, much less failures related to the control cables. And also personal safety. Uh, what is the reason for that? Using fiber, we are providing an electrical insulation between the devices that are in the sweet yard and the devices that are in the uh, control room. Okay. So this will uh, help with the personal safety. And th this will make possible in the future, if you don't have now, the use of optical CTs, which will be bred for the optical CTs when you have that. So uh, how that we can use fiber instead of uh, uh, copper cables. So here I have in the sweet yard, I have the bay, uh, the circuit breaker, the CTs, uh, the PTs, so I'm going to connect the CTs and the PTs uh, to a merging unit. It's an electronic device, okay? It's not a protection relay. It's just uh, 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 getting voltage and current. And also this merging unit has digital inputs and digital outputs to trip the circuit breaker and also to get the status of the circuit breaker and the alarms and so on. So we have uh, analog inputs for CTs and PTs, and you have digital inputs and outputs. Um, 
So that merging unit will be installed very close to the circuit breaker and uh, will send the information to the relay to the intelligent electronic device that it's in the control room. We'll send that information through fiber. This is called a process bus. Okay, so this device will digitize the uh, voltage and currents and it will send that information to the relay inside of the control room through the fiber, through using a, a protocol. That can be sampled values or we can have uh, different protocols. I mean, uh, uh, 61850 sampled values or different protocols. We can also connect that merging unit to the station bus, I mean, to the SCADA, okay, to the HMI, uh, uh, to the local HMI in the substation, and also to the remote control center. So we can uh, connect and send information from the uh, breaker, uh, breaker status, disconnect switch, and so on directly. Or if uh, uh, or another option, it's not having this connection to the station bus and have only the connection from the IED to the station bus. So the IED re will receive the information from the merging unit and will pass that information, uh, that data to the uh, local HMI and uh, to the uh, remote control center. Okay. To apply this um, uh, approach, we need to have a time sink in the substation. And uh, we can use the uh, ethernet network that we have in the substation to do that uh, uh, time sink also. Another, appro another approach to um, eliminate copper cables or to reduce, I cannot eliminate, but uh, we can reduce the copper cables in the substation is to move the relays to the switch yard. That means instead of installing the relays in a control room, I'm going to install the relays in the suite yard in a outdoor uh, cabinet, like in this picture here, in this figure. Okay. So uh, what I need, I need a short run of uh, copper cables to connect the primary devices to these uh, relays. They are really close. So uh, it's a very short, uh, it's a, it's a not uh, uh, long uh, copper cable. So I'm going to connect the CTs and VTs and uh, all of the uh, digital input and outputs with that uh, uh, short copper cables. Uh, of course, that for this approach, we need to have uh, digital devices that can uh, be installed in the yard. That means they must be designed for harsh environments. I'm talking about uh, uh, temperature. I'm, talk I'm talking about electromagnetic uh, uh, com uh, uh, interference. So we need to have some uh, rugged devices to be installed in the yard. Okay? This is a really good approach. And now I'm going to run fiber cables from that cabinet to the control room where I have the HMI and also where I have the gateway that will be connected to the remote control center. So instead of running copper cables from the sweet yard to the control room, I'm running just fiber optics. So this is uh, one example. So uh, I have the uh, relays installed in the sweet yard and I have a uh, uh, copper cable, uh, sorry, fiber cables running the information to the uh, control room where I have the HMI, where I have the gateway and uh, so on. I'm going to play a video. Uh, this video, it's about a project um, with a power company, a distribution uh, power company called uh, uh, Electro. And uh, uh, they decided to use this approach of installing the devices in the suite yard, okay? And they have uh, uh, some really nice um, uh, benefits from that approach. So I'm going to play the video. A Electro possui hoje mais de 2 milhões de clientes, uh, atendendo uma porção total 
mais ou menos de 5 milhões de pessoas. Temos até o final deste ano de 2010, 36 subestações modernizadas em parceria com a Schweitzer. E a parceria vem nos trazendo frutos positivos aí a nível de supervisão, controle e monitoramento e modernização das subestações. Com a implantação da norma 6150, a gente consegue muitos ganhos na questão de manutenção do sistema, aumento da periodicidade de manutenção nas subestações, a confiabilidade frente aos equipamentos que nós estamos instalando. O fato de que a SEL faz os relays e as Ethernet interfaces muito rugged significa que podemos mover os dois para o yard. E depois podemos mover a informação da yard subestação para o control building over a fiber optic cable using digital messages instead of bundles and bundles of copper conductors. A redução da implantação de cabos na subestação, mais do que 30% dos cabos são eliminados. Eu tenho ganhos para a parte de acesso e também toda a parte de controle e monitoração online. Análise de projeto, assim como o projeto, é muito simplificado. Redução do tempo de comissionamento, supervisão e controle à distância com possibilidade de alteração nas lógicas e ajustes dos equipamentos. Os grandes benefícios que eu posso citar frente à modernização sendo feita na Electro é a segurança dos nossos eletricistas, onde não há mais a necessidade de estar indo até a subestação para fazer qualquer ação de manobra, de conexão, isso a gente consegue fazer via remota. Pondo menos ao risco, assim como garantindo uma maior confiabilidade da energia entregue aos nossos clientes. Desde o início do trabalho junto à Schweitzer, é importante destacar que a gente sempre teve um, um pronto atendimento, mesmo em situações emergenciais. O suporte técnico apresentado pela equipe da Schweitzer do Brasil é, na minha maneira de pensar, incrível. Então, são pessoas que nos disponibilizam e estão sempre tentando nos dar a resposta o mais rápido possível. É um processo bem positivo, que vem nos atendendo é, adequadamente e resolvendo os problemas dentro dos tempos adequados e necessários para a nossa empresa. Okay, so uh, this is one uh, uh, real case of uh, uh, the benefits that uh, uh, our company had with the uh, substation uh, digitalization. So um, we could see how happy they um, are with the results that uh, they got. So that project, it's from uh, um, uh, 2006 to uh, 2010, okay? That was a four year uh, project and um, they are still uh, doing the uh, digitalization of the substations, but that uh, uh, video is specifically for that uh, uh, time frame from 2006 to uh, 2010. The video, it's from uh, 2010, okay? So it's not something new. Um, let's talk about some of the schemes that were implemented in that specific uh, uh, project. So one of them was the fast bus tripping and breaker failure protection. So I, I think that uh, you are aware uh, when we have, um, so this is a distribution substation with the transformer, uh, the feeders, the breakers. So uh, basically the main uh, relay. So this is the main relay. This is the feeder relay. So uh, when I have, I, I, we need to coordinate the overcurrent protection um, between the main and the feeder relay. So when I have a fault in front of the feeder, uh, only the feeder uh, circuit breaker is supposed to trip. So uh, for a fault, I need to have a trip by the feeder and the main uh, relay will not trip. So I need to have this time coordination between the main relay and the feeder relay. When we have the fault in the bus, I'm going to trip in a very long time, uh, sometimes 300 milliseconds, 500 milliseconds, okay? So uh, the idea of the fast bus tripping is to use a high speed communication between the relays. And uh, when I have a fault in the feeder, the feeder will send a block signal to the uh, main relay. So in that way, I can implement a fast overcurrent protection or function in the main that will be blocked by this block signal. When the fault is in the bus, I don't have that block signal. Why? Because what I have here are uh, the feeders, they are radio, there is no source. 
in the feeder. So the current, the fault current will be flowing only through the main relay and the main relay will not receive any block. So the main relay, instead of tripping in 500 milliseconds, will trip in 50 milliseconds. Okay. However, when I have a fault in the feeder, the feeder will send the block signal and uh, the main relay will not trip. Uh, if there is a breaker failure, for instance, for a fault in front of the um, uh, closing fault for the feeder, if the breaker does not open, uh, this relay can send a breaker failure signal to the main relay saying, hey, I sent the trip to the breaker, but the breaker didn't open. Can you please trip your breaker? So the main relay will trip the breaker and clear the fault. So this is the breaker failure with the fast bus tripping using the same communication channel. In terms of uh, uh, switch gears, so we can uh, have the relays with the arc flash function also. So we have some uh, sensors, arc flash sensors. Uh, we can, um, it depends of uh, the relay, I can have uh, four, eight sensors. And uh, we can have different types of sensors. We can have uh, the point sensors or we can have the bare fiber that is a kind of a regional um, uh, sensor. So if there is a fault in the bus and uh, uh, it's uh, the arc flash, so that sensors will sense the light and the, the relay that is installed in the main uh, breaker will, will receive that information and also will measure the current that it's flowing. So I can do a combination of light and current and this relay can trip uh, uh, really fast. How fast this relay can trip? Two milliseconds. So we can have a high speed output contacts and the uh, light sensor, it's really fast. And we have a special overcurrent function that is really fast also. So this relay can detect an arc flash and send the trip to the breaker in two, only two milliseconds. Okay. So this is saving lives in different parts of the world. So this is a really uh, good um, approach okay, to having sweet, in medium voltage switch gears, even low voltage switch gears, this can be applied for, for uh, low voltage and medium voltage switch gears. And uh, see, uh, what is the price that we have for a life? So the thing here is, it's not how expensive is this? It's the benefit that you have saving uh, lives. In terms of uh, transmission systems, we can have the traveling wave fault locating in the uh, digital relay. So you don't need to have an additional traveling wave system. You can have uh, digital relays with traveling wave fault locating, I mean, a line protection relays with the traveling wave fault locating, okay? So with this feature, we can pinpoint uh, faults or events in the transmission line because sometimes you do not have a fault. You have a flashover that it's uh, an uh, incipient fault, okay, in the transmission line that will not cause the uh, uh, a breakdown of the insulation, okay? But the traveling wave can detect that event and can send you some information. Hey, this transmission line, it's having incipient faults in this location. Go take a look if it's a vegetation growing um, below the line, or if it's an um, uh, insulator that has some uh, dirt on it. Okay. So if it's a sustained fault, the fault location will tell, tell you what is the location with an accuracy of uh, 300 meters. Okay. So uh, the accuracy, it's one tower span. Okay. Of course, this will expedite service uh, restoration. So that means if you have a sustained fault in the transmission line, this fault locating, uh, traveling wave fault locating can indicate where is the fault with uh, 300 meters accuracy. So you can send the patrol directly to the point um, 
you have the problem. You don't need to have the patrol going along the entire line to find what is the problem. Of course, this will reduce outage time and costs. In some countries, transmission companies, they are penalized for the amount of time that the line is experiencing the outage, the unexpected outage that it's caused by a fault in the transmission line, a sustained fault. So having this uh, uh, feature, you can avoid that penalties, okay? So as I'm saying, you can identify insulator with problems. Uh, so this is one example, okay? So the uh, maintenance people went directly to the tower, where is the problem? Um, and this is done in real time. So when we have a fault in the transmission line, that fault will launch traveling waves in both directions. The digital relays installed at both terminals of the line will detect that traveling wave using the information from the traveling wave. They will uh, locate the fault and they are going to send the fault location to the control center immediately. So even before the breaker opens, that information can be sent to the control uh, center. And the control center can dispatch the maintenance people or the patrol directly to the point uh, where is the fault. So this is a really important um, feature for transmission companies. In summary, uh, we can say that uh, uh, going from analog to digital technology, we are going to reduce initial and operating costs. We are going to improve con continuity of service. So this is really important for our uh, customers and also for the power companies. So uh, we keep selling energy. This will improve the reliability of the system. And of course, it will reduce uh, maintenance and the uh, cost is related with maintenance. So this is my presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Ricardo. Um, I think that was a great overview of the benefits, um, you know, of implementing this uh, this new technology. Um, and for those participants that want to view the full video um, that Ricardo was showing, um, the presentation will be sent to you with the the full length of, of the of the video. So thank you so much, Ricardo. And with that, I'll pass the floor over to Gleadson. Thank you, Jake. Uh, I'm gonna share my screen now. Just a moment. Can you see my screen? Yep. Okay. So, uh, good afternoon, everyone. And I'm Gleit Sumendes Costa. I work as system analyst in Equatorial Maranhão, and I'm responsible for the SCADA system on the on this group. So this presentation, uh, I'm gonna show you the digitalization of Equatorial Group substations, and our and our agenda is we're gonna talk about some numbers of Equatorial Group, and then we're gonna pass through the existing substation digitalization program, and the advantages of having this kind of tech, new technology on our substations. Uh, then we're gonna we're gonna tell. I'm gonna show some projects that we have that are only possible because of these intelligent electronic devices, the IGs. And finally, we're gonna show the conclusions of the of this project. So Equatorial has four companies um, on the on the on the X group, and it's compounded by Equatorial Para, Equatorial Maranhão, Equatorial Piauí, and Equatorial Alagoas. And this company serves around 22 million people in 687 municipalities. We have around 380 substations and 12 uh, transmission substations. So our digitalization substation digitalization program started on 2005 where we switch change the relays, meters, and HMIs and auxiliary DC systems to the digital relays. And it was a, a 10 year program finalized in 2015. And in 2015, six, we acquired three new, we, we, we began to acquire new, new companies. 
that were, as I said, Equatorial Pará, Piauí, and Alagoas. Equatorial Pará and Alagoas are, are fully digitalized right now, are 100% digitalized, but Equatorial Piauí, we tend to finalize the fully digital, digitalization in the, at the end of this year. Uh, some important points that we analyzed when we, apply, we start this project is to have the quality and re reliability on the device should be the priority. So do it to uh, reduce the staff and expenses on the maintenance, we should have to, we, we have to guarantee that the, the, the quality of the, 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 automatic, the, the automatic process. Uh, flexible communication architecture and structure. So it has to be possible to be restored and configured remotely or managed by the operator on site. All the electronic devices should have remote access for configuration. So we should have access even if you are in, inside the substation or outside the substation. Uh, it can have, it wouldn't be a, a problem. Uh, user of auxiliary relays should be avoided. Uh, because the relay should do all the work by itself. And it's kind of communication protocol to this device should be simple, should be standard, standard, standardized and commonly used by relay vendors. So it will it would re reduce the, the, the maintenance cost and reduce the, the complexity of maintaining the, the, this kind of. Uh, the communication leaks should be optical fiber and to avoid noise. So due to the, technolo the technologies in 2005, some of these criteria couldn't be fulfilled, uh, but on the emergence of the internet communications, we could fulfill some of the, 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 the points, like the, the, the flexible communication, for example. And in the beginning of the, the process of, uh, digitalization, with the digitalization, we began with the architecture where we had some, uh, we had some relay, uh, serial relays, where each serial relay has two ports, uh, port A and port B. One, one of the, 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 the port A of each relay were connected to our optical concentrator that communicates with our RTU and then with our SCADA system by, uh, through a DNP3 serial protocol, communication protocol. And all this communication through the substation to the, the, the SCADA was done by uh, IT network. We use an IT network uh, until the, the, our SCADA that was controlled by the control center. In this, at the same link, the IT link, it was used by, is used by the engineering access that can collect logs and make configurations. Uh, it can access the same, the same relay by a different port. So the port A, it's used for monitoring the, the relay, the, the equipment, and port B of each relay is used for uh, engineering access. So if you wanted to access the, the, the relay, we should have, it should be in a different port. So here we don't have a redundancy. So if I lose this optical concentrator, I only have engineering access do, uh, accessing for the port A. If I lose this, this uh, the engineering access, I only have the monitoration, but I don't have the, the, the remote access from, from outside the substation. Uh, and this problem was solved in the architecture too, where we had uh, an Ethernet digital relays, where we could have uh, uh, redundancy on our substation. So even if the relay has two ports, A and B, the two ports can do the same, the same thing. So I have many protocols in the same, the same connection, the same physical link between the IEG to the to the switch. So uh, here, the port A is connected to switch A and port B is connected to switch B. If I lose switch A, I still have the monitoration and the engineering access through the same physical link. This is our redundancy that we have on our substations. 
that guarantee our quality and reliability on our our information and equipment and monitorations and the controls done by the the control center. Uh, the IT networks is still the same. So we, uh, for serial communication, the internet communications, the IT network is still the same. And all this information goes to uh, our SCADA and the SCADA is controlled by the control center. Okay. Uh, the advantages, the benefits of using digitalized substations are mainly for uh, reducing space, reducing space using uh, only one panel that can have uh, all the equipment on it. So as long as the IEGs are multifunctional, so they have pro protections, control, metering, and automation, we have a reduced, reduced uh, reduction on the usage of, uh, of equipment on the substation. And all of, in, then in all of these functions are, are integrated on a, on a relay. And this relay is, uh, occupies a space on the, the panel. So in here, in this, this, this substation specific, we have four relays and we have four more slots for more relays if you want to expand the, 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 the substation. So we have a reduction of equipment. Uh, we have a reduction in space. We have a reduction of use of, of wiring, as Ricard said on, the, on his presentation. Uh, we don't need no more auxiliary relays for monitoring specific points because the relay, the automatic relay, digital relay can do all the, the, the tasks by itself. Uh, in the same panel, it accommodates the uh, different many, many, many relays. Uh, this second relay here is used for the network inside the substation. So we have the suites that I've said in this slide, the previous slide. I uh, have the, the suites and the RTU that connects all the, the points that go, that sends the information to the, to the, to the SCAR. Uh, all these equipment has a function that of self-diagnosis that we can ind that indicates internal problems in the, in the equipment that is used for uh, that is used for prevent maintenance and we can see we can see we can check the, the all, all these problems before a big failure affects the, the power system. Uh, the log that, that I was uh, the, the all these internal errors we can check on this log. So the relays have a log system, a log function, where we can see all the sequence events, metering data loggers, oscillographies, and all this data can be retrieved remotely. So being able to, to, to retrieve this information remotely, we can apply quickly solutions. We speed up return to server process and outage duration is easily to be measured. Uh, the most common failures and errors we can identify on the logs are CTs and PCs, wide or connection errors, wrong logic implemented, failures in the auxiliary DC power supply, slow circuit break operations, failures, uh, equipment auxiliary contacts, improper sequence of manual operations. Uh, one of this, the, the information that we, we, we can retrieve are oscillography that are really important for fault location. And once the fault location is identified, we can uh, restore the service as quickly as possible because we act where the problem is released. We don't have to be uh, to, to search all the, 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 the line to, to, to see where the problem is. And all of this we can retrieve automatically. Um, as I said, the images of Ethernet communications made our, uh, our connection, our remote connection much easier because in the same physical, physical link, connection link, we can have different protocols working in the same time. So the relay can, we can have the access for the, 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 the relay access through uh, HTTP protocol so we can access via web browser. Uh, engineering access can be done by uh, Telnet. So using the, the prompt, prompt 
terminal. Uh, we can access all the information, logs, can see the configurations, the status of all of info. Uh, we can have um, uh, time sync protocols communication. So all the, the data, the data of all equipments are synchronized. Uh, Motorbus pro protocol, the NP3 protocol. So the, the SCADA uh, communicates with relays through uh, the NP3 protocol. So this is uh, an interface that we have in, in Equatorial that we use for monitoring and controlling all the, the equipment. And it's, it's done by uh, through uh, the NP3 protocol communication. And uh, P2P high-speed communication. Relay to relay can communication for uh, uh, high speed uh, high speed uh, actuation. Uh, some projects highlighted by by us uh, that was possible to be done using intelligent electronic devices. One of the, these projects is the mass analysis of the of, of the events. So we have the remote engineering access. So we can build some scripts that can automate the collection of data, automate the audit reports, automate modification of settings. So uh, a task that a person could have done in one week, we can reduce this time. If the person is really focused on this task, uh, it takes a week to access all the, the relays to retrieve some information or change some configuration. It would take a week to, to, to have done this task. We can reduce this time in 10 minutes, 15 minutes. So having this, this automated collection, automated retrieve, we can uh, make the, 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 the job more productive. Uh, this is an example of, uh, of changing change the, the settings. It's like uh, if you want to change the IP address of this SNTP server, we can do the do it in, in seconds of one, one relay. Uh, another project that we have using this same data analysis are we have a database of IP address. We pass this all this information, the this, this information to the script made by made in Python. And the, the script will access our relays, retrieve all events, and count all supply failures for each for each IG. So we don't have to access the manually the, the, the events and count by ourselves the each uh, occurrence. The script can can do it uh, by itself. Another project that we have are the fast bus trip scheme, where using the communication of the among the, the relays, we can speed up the, uh, we can reduce the, the time of the bus fault clearing. So if I identify a fault in front of a, a feeder, a feeder relay, it sends a signal to the main, the main relay and say to, the, to the, the main relay, I'm trip, so you don't have to trip. Uh, and the in different situation, if I have a fault in the, the, the bus bar, uh, the relay, the main relay identifies that no feeder sends a signal. So it knows that the trip is on this area. So it, uh, instead of using uh, 300, 500 milliseconds to, to trip, it do this, the, this job in five, 50, sec, 50 milliseconds. Uh, reduce the accumulative damage do, to the to the transformer. Another project uh, are the equipment that are not high speed that doesn't have uh, equipment that doesn't have uh, high speed communication. Uh, we can use fault fault sensors and a relay to to send to send the information to the to the recloser that a trip that a fault occurred in front. Of you. So it it you're gonna do the same job as a, uh, as a fetchable strip scheme, but using a different equipment. So use, using this, uh, we avoid to, to buy a different, different uh, uh, to change the, 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 the equipment that we are using here. 
Uh, of this, this test of this project, we could improve the quality of our surface and improve our system reliability, reliability and reduce the operation maintenance costs. And this, all this, the, this job, and of course, uh, uh, another, another, another job that we have done, we could manage to, to grow on the National Regulatory Agency from bottom to top. And that's all. Thank you for, for the Thank you so much, Gleetson. Um, I think that was a great, uh, great uh, overview of, of how um, Equatorial Energy has used this um, technology. Um, so thank you both for presenting. Um, I did have um, a couple of questions and um, to the audience, if you have any questions, please feel free to um, put them in the chat or the Q&A box below. Um, so before um, you both started presenting, Jamila um, talked about how digital substations are, you know, a $7 billion um, industry. Um, can you talk a little bit about how um, abundant uh, this technology is? Um, you know, are most utilities, um, you know, either utilizing this technology or, or thinking about using this technology? Um, <clears throat> thanks for the uh, question, Jake. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, what happens is that uh, if you try to, uh, uh, to build a new substation with electromechanical relays, it will be really expensive. Right. So the initial cost will be really expensive and also the operating costs will be high also, and we are not going to have all of that benefits that uh, we mentioned. So all new substations, almost all new substations, they are digital substations. Uh, the digitalization degree can differ from one company to another company. So some companies, they are, uh, let's say, more aggressive in terms of applying new technologies. So when I discussed about uh, uh, reducing copper cables using uh, digital protocols to send information from the primary equipment to the uh, protection relays to the automation system. So some companies are still uh, using copper cables instead of fiber, mm -hmm. but we are seeing that now uh, more companies, especially transmission companies, you know, because transmission substations, they are really large. Right. So they have very long copper cables that are very expensive and very uh, prone to faults or to failures in the copper cables. Mm -hmm. So replacing that copper cables with uh, fiber uh, will reduce the installation cost, the initial cost, and also will increase the reliability. So some people think that this will decrease, but actually this will uh, 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 can increase the reliability. You just need to apply the proper technology, okay, rugged, as I, I was saying, rugged devices in the substation. So it's a very harsh environment, a transmission substation, especially right. when you are talking about the tropical uh, regions where you can have really high temperatures, uh, really um, uh, humid um, climb. Uh, so it's really important to have a rugged device that it's uh, specific for that kind of application. So yes. so. Uh, utilities, uh, but now we have the questions. I have a, a substation that uh, it's in, uh, in operation for several years and we have electromechanical. In some cases, uh, we have a solid state relays there because actually we have three technologies, okay? We have electromechanical, solid state and digital or microprocess uh, 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 relays. Mm -hmm. So we can have some old substation with electromechanical relays and the solid state relays. So the decision is, should we modernize that substation? So based on all of that information that uh, we passed uh, through this webinar, for me, it's very clear. So yes, it's a, a no brain decision, but uh, anyway, we need to have the resources to do that. Absolutely. And uh, uh, doing that modernization in the substation, uh, this will bring a lot of benefits, okay? And as Gladson was showing in his uh, 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 almost uh, the, uh, before the last slide, they 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 were showing or uh, Gladson wa uh, was showing a table where uh, it's a performance rank 
from the national regulator in Brazil. So that performance rank uh, is showing that Equatorial is in the second place. In the past, they were at the bottom of that rank. Now they are on the top of the rank. So right. the customers were been, uh, have uh, had a lot of benefits, best uh, or better power quality okay, to the customers. The utility, it's getting more money. That's the point also. <laughs> So, and uh, um, this is some of my uh, comments about your question that it, it is a great question. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and kind of going off that, can you um, maybe uh, show the, the magnitude of cost savings that utilities would save by switching to this technology? I know you probably don't have specific numbers, but, yeah. <laughs> but just talk a little a bit. Numbers. I can give some examples. For instance, yeah. I worked with a transmission company mm -hmm. uh, that um, they had several transmission lines. And uh, uh, the amount of money that they make, it's not based on the power that is transmitted through the transmission line. But mm -hmm. the revenue, it's based on the amount of time that the transmission line is made avail available for the operation of the system. Okay. So mm -hmm. if they have an unexpected outage, they are penalized, losing revenue, but also they have an additional penalty, financial penalty, okay? Uh, I see. And uh, three minutes of outage was equivalent to the traveling wave system. I mean, the installation, buy and install a traveling wave fault locating system, okay? So if the traveling wave fault locating, it's able to save them a single three minutes in the whole life, just three minutes, that was enough to pay for the uh, installation and uh, um, uh, design and everything related to the installation of the traveling wave system. So this is one example, okay? Mm -hmm. In terms of uh, distribution companies, um, how much will be, uh, I mean, how money will be saved? Uh, it depends because uh, uh, we need to check uh, how often it's the maintenance that they have. In some countries, uh, if you have a low performance um, index, okay, uh, some distribution companies will be penalized because of the, uh, that uh, uh, low performance. So how much is the uh, pen penalty that we have for that low performance? So using the digital technology, we are showing that uh, you can uh, restore uh, the substation in service much faster. So actually, it's, it's difficult to give you a uh, quantity. Uh, it's much easier to give you a, a qualitative uh, idea about that. Okay? Yeah, but that anyway, uh, uh, power companies, they need to work with vendors. They need to check which technology the vendors can have to help them to solve the problems. And uh, we can give an idea working together, we can have an idea um, how much money that we can save. Yeah, that's um, one of my other points was, um, or one of my other questions was, you know, how, do you, how would utilities, you know, even, even begin to think about implementing these technologies? But like you said, I think um, the first step would, would probably be talking to um, the vendors and, um, you know, every utility is different. So I think, you know, um, talking to, you know, either Schweitzer, Siemens, ABB, um, you know, in whatever part of the world these utilities are in, um, you know, these, these vendors such as yourself can um, create a customized solution for each utility yes. that would benefit them. Th that's one important point, okay? Having a really good support from the vendor and I'm not take, talking about just during the implementation, but the pause implementation. So right. having a really good technical support, it's key for this technology. That's, that's the point. This is really important, okay? So if you don't have a really good and strong technical support from the vendor, uh, you can fail. You yeah, can fail. absolutely. Um, and I, yeah, I think it's important to, to create those relationships and, um, you know, definitely guide uh, utilities through this process because, um, you know, as you showed, you both showed in your presentations, it's um, it's a very you know complicated process. But um, 
but yeah, I agreed speaking to the vendors and um, uh, we'll, we'll definitely go a long way in, in helping implement these solutions. So, um, so thank you both so much um, for your presentations and um, I hope uh, that it was helpful for, for the audience. And I, I know myself, I learned a lot um, just listening to you both. Um, to all of our attendees, thank you for attending this webinar. Um, there's a quick survey after the webinar um, and your participation is, is greatly appreciated. You know, if you have any comments or feedback or topics that you would like us to discuss in future uh, sessions, um, please feel free to note it um, in that survey. Um, we'll be posting a recording of the webinar um, and the PowerPoint presentations um, on our website. Um, so thank you, Ricardo and Gleason, for your great presentations. Um, and uh, thank you all for joining this webinar today. And uh, I hope to see you again next time. So thanks, everyone.